Hey there! So I made this jewelry organizer a while back and I made some for Christmas and after I made them I found a bunch of other ideas so I put them all together to make this one you see here. And I've been using it for a while and I really like it. So for this project you're going to need some canvas stretcher bars um, or a large regular frame that you can cover or if you like an ornate frame you can use that. I'm using a canvas fabric for this project. Uh, you're also going to need some wood filler to fill in these gaps. The next thing is Mod Podge. I'm using a matte one so it doesn't show through the fabric. A foam sponge to apply the Mod Podge. Cutting utensils, scissors, and a rotary cutter. Um, a drill. Some hardware. I've got some small brass cup hooks that I'm using to hang the jewelry from some brass screws to attach the bumpers to the back, and some picture hanging hardware. Uh, these are the furniture bumpers that I'm going to use to hold the piece away from the wall. I've also got dowel rods and dowel rod cap ends. Uh, you'll need a hammer. I'm also using a plastic canvas like for children's embroidery, and you're going to need a cutting mat. If you're going to use a canvas stretcher, go ahead and dovetail the pieces together. They're going to fit um, a little bit loosely until you get all four pieces together. And then after you've done that, go ahead and hammer them till it's square. I've added wood filler to any of the gaps that I had. I let it dry and then sanded everything smooth. Now you want it to take your fabric and decide which way you want it to go across your piece. Now lay out your fabric, place your piece on top and line it up so that you will have enough fabric to cover into the inside of the frame like this. Now use a marking tool and mark where you want to cut the fabric at. Remember you want to leave enough fabric that you can wrap it to the inside of the frame. And then mark your line where you're going to cut. So I've cut out my fabric, I've ironed it, and I've marked with pins where I want my frame to lay after I've painted it with Mod Podge. And you want to make sure that you do this quickly and flip it over so that you lay it down right where you want it. You want to do this quickly because the Mod Podge will probably dry pretty quick and I'm using a larger frame. Okay, so I've taken a little bit of the Mod Podge and poured it into a lid from an old bottle that I had. And I'm going to use my foam brush to quickly paint on a nice thin coat of the Mod Podge. You don't want it to be too thick because it might soak through the fabric and show. Um, you want to make sure you get all of the front surface of the frame very well. Now that the piece is covered, go ahead and flip it over. Carefully line it up with your pens and center it on your fabric. And then push it down onto the fabric so that it starts to stick. Move your glue out of the way and then hold the edges and flip your frame over. Now if you did this right, it probably didn't move too much, so go ahead and push the fabric down into the glue so it makes a nice seal and do this all the way around. As you work your way around, make sure that you smooth out any wrinkles, but make sure that you work fast because this glue will start to dry very quickly. Alright, now that you've got your fabric all smoothed out, go ahead and flip your frame over. And the next thing that we're going to be doing is to cut a rectangle from the inside of this frame and we want to make sure that we leave enough that uh, we have enough to go up the side of the frame and over the back side so that it wraps it completely. So I'm going to use my rotary cutter to cut this rectangle out um, and again anytime you use a rotary cutter you want to make sure that you've got a cutting mat underneath it so that you don't ruin your table. Now take a pair of scissors and cut from the inside edge of the square you just cut out to the frame edge at an angle. And you want to make sure that you leave just a tiny little bit near the frame that you haven't cut so that you don't rip through the fabric as you're gluing it up the inside. Okay, so now we're going to take some Mod Podge and coat just the inside lip of the frame. Make sure you do that nice and smooth like you did before. And we're going to fold the fabric up and stick to that. And you want to make sure as you're doing this, you're pulling it nice and tight, working out the wrinkles. And you may also notice that the inside edge of the wood frame is showing, and we'll fix that later. 
So once you've got the inside edge all smoothed out, you want to lay this over, eyeball it, and cut off what you don't need, and then coat the piece with Mod Podge on that side, lay it down, and smooth it as you go, and do this to all four sides. Okay, the next step is to measure and cut off a 45 degree angle off of the fabric. So just lift it up to the edge of the frame and mark it with a marking tool. I'm using a chalk pencil. Then using a straight edge in your rotary cutter, measure approximately a 45 degree angle with the corner of the fabric and cut that excess fabric off. This will allow you to have a little bit of a cleaner edge on your uh, frame. So you'll go ahead and add some glue to the frame and then you'll pull up the corner of the fabric that you just cut off and ap apply it to the frame and glue. Then lift up the two long sides of the fabric and you'll tuck in a small little fold of fabric and lay down the long end of the fabric into the glue. And you'll do this on both sides. Remember tucking in the little V of fabric and applying it into the Mod Podge that you've laid down. Now after you've glued it down, you may want to take and add a little bit of extra Mod Podge to the folded over portion of the fabric. Uh, this is going to be on the back so you can add as much glue as you think you're going to need. It's not going to show. Um, press it down very firmly and you can also tuck in any corner that may be sticking out here and then use a small push pen or a uh, straight needle, straight pen to uh, keep that corner down while it's folded. I'm pushing in the uh, straight pen now. So as that glue is drying it's going to keep that corner nice and clean. So here is the inside of the frame. After I've glued everything down, you can see the exposed portion of the frame and we're going to cover that up. And you can also see where I've pinned down the fabric for the folded corner. Here you can see uh, what the folded corner looks like. After I've tucked in the V's, you can see one V here. Um, sort of like when you're wrapping a present, you can fold these edges under. So whatever works for you and whatever looks cleanest. Uh, I just found that this worked well for me. And here's the other side of the V. You can kind of see the edge of the V underneath the fabric. Now for the inside corner of the frame where you could see the wood, I created these little fan-shaped embellishments out of um, a scrap of fabric and I found some pink and green buttons that I'm going to glue on top of the corners to cover up the intersection between the flower and the frame. To make the little fan embellishment, I took a scrap of fabric approximately 2 inches by 5 inches long and folded in the two ends to get a clean edge for my end pieces. And then I took and folded the long width of the fabric in thirds so that I had both sides of the embellishment with clean edges. The inside fold there is not going to show. And I'm folding it down to approximately three quarters of an inch tall. So I'm just pressing in the fold with my fingers here so that I have a clean edge to work with. And then I folded it into an accordion and I am going to run a couple of stitches through it I'm just using my cutting mat as a uh, surface to push the needle against, so just be careful you don't poke your fingers here. So I'm running the needle through it a couple of times just so that I can tie a knot and secure my embellishment. After you run the needle through a couple of times, just tie it off in a knot. Now I'm going to take a bead of hot glue and run it down the long sides of both sides of the embellishment in order to secure it into the corner of my frame. So just run a good clean bead of glue on both sides and a little bit in the middle where the folds meet. 
and push it into the corner of your frame. And be very careful because this glue is hot. So I'm just pushing it into the corner and securing the sides to the edge of the frame to cover up my raw wood in the corner. Now I'm going to take one of my green buttons and put a little bit of hot glue on the front side of the button. And then I'm going to take one of my pink buttons and stick it to that and clean up any of the hot glue that uh, squeezes out the holes of the pink button. Now take a good sized dollop of hot glue into the corner of the frame where the embellishment meets the inside edge of the frame and secure the button embellishment on top of that. And this is just going to cover up where the flower embellishment meets the frame. Okay, all four corners are done. So I've just added the embellishments, made sure they're clean, and uh, cleaned up any of the extra excess glue strings that have come off of the hot glue. Now go ahead and flip this over and we are going to attach the plastic mesh. I've gone ahead and cut this down to size and now I'm going to use a staple gun to attach it. And what I did was I just started on one side and then stapled across from that to the other side, stretching it as I go and cleaning it up. You're going to want to work on opposite sides. So now that I've done the two long sides, I'm going to work on the top and bottom, again starting in the middle, and stretch to the bottom and staple that down. After that, you can do all four far corners and then staple in the portions in between. Now that I've got all my staples in, some of them didn't go in all the way, so I'm just using a hammer to continue pushing the staples into the back of the frame and to secure my plastic mesh. Now I'm going to put the bumpers on, and these bumpers will hold the frame away from the wall so that if you put in earrings, like French hook earrings, they won't scratch the wall behind it. So these bumpers are about a half inch thick, and they have a little divot in the middle. And they also have adhesive on the back. So I'm just sticking it to the inside or the back of the frame, squishing it down, and taking my drill bit and drilling a small pilot hole to screw the bumper to the back of the frame so that it doesn't fall off. So just drill a little bit of a hole, enough to get your screw started. And I'm using a little brass screwdriver, or a little brass screw, and my screwdriver, and drilling that into the hole, or screwing that into the hole that I just drilled. And then you want to make sure that you do this to all four corners. And now that it's secure, I'll continue on to the other four corners. Now you want to go ahead and put your picture hanging hardware on top. I just laid them down, eyeballed it, and then measured it to make sure they were all even. Okay, so now on the front, I'm going to use these dowel rods to hang some of my earrings from. I'm going to attach this to the frame using some of the brass hu cup hooks from earlier. And I'm going to also attach cup hooks all over the frame so that I can hang necklaces and bracelets and other things like that. So what I'm going to do is attach the cup hooks, slide the dowel rod into the cup hook, and then attach some dowel rod ends. Now I'm going to mark where I want to put my dowel rod for my earrings, and I want to make sure that I screw in the J hooks, or the cup hooks, a little inside from the edge of the dowel rod so that I have room to glue on the cap. 
Um, once you mark where you want to put them, go ahead and drill your pilot hole and start screwing in your cup hooks. You may need to use a, a screwdriver sideways to help screw in the cup hooks. These small ones tend to hurt your fingers. And now I've got my cup hooks in and I've slid my dowel rod in through the holes in the cup hooks. And now I'm going to glue on the dowel rod ends to keep the cup hook or to keep the dowel rod from sliding out of the cup hooks. Here you could probably also use a ribbon across here if you didn't want to use dowel rods. So I'm just going to take a little wooden cap and put a little bit of glue in the hole and stick it onto the end of my dowel rod. So here I'm applying a little bit of glue into the inside of the hole of the dowel rod cap and sticking it on. So now I've got all of my cup hooks in and I've got two dowel rods to hang earrings. So what I did was I just eyeballed where I wanted my first two uh, sets of cup hooks to be and then I measured down from there to evenly space the other rows of cup hooks. And I had this little tin left over from a Christmas project so I'm going to add a couple of cup hooks to the bottom to attach this to the bottom of my jewelry holder. And this tin just happened to have holes in it, so I'm going to um, mark where I want the holes, or where I want the uh, cup hooks to be in order to hook this onto the, to the frame. If you didn't have a um, tin or a container that had uh, holes in it, you could just drill directly through and screw it into the frame. This tin is pretty thin. And I got this basket at uh, Hobby Lobby, I think. So I'm just going to attach that onto the bottom of my frame here. Now that I've got all my cup hooks in, I'm going to use a piece of ribbon to run through my picture hangers to hang this on the wall. So I want to make sure I have enough to double up and go through the picture hangers and leave a little bit extra and then more to tie a bow with. Now just fold the ribbon up and run it through the picture hanger loops on both sides. And then flip the frame over and tie the ribbon into a bow. So after this is tied into a bow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and trim and singe the edges of the ribbon so they don't come unraveled. And then I'm just going to hang this on the wall with one of those awk hook type picture hangers and hang it from the ribbon here, just like this. So this is the completed project. You can hang earrings either from the dowels or directly into the plastic mesh. And I've also recently added some S-hooks to the mesh to hang some additional necklaces off of. So I hope you enjoyed this project, and I will see you next time. Bye!